Hey friend, welcome. I'm so excited to have you here listening to another episode of the Pattern Design Circle podcast. Here we talk all about the ins and outs of designing knit and crochet patterns and running a business that makes it all possible. I'm Jessica, your host, knitting pattern designer, design mentor, and the friend in your ear. Can't wait to dive right in. The Pattern Design Circle podcast is sponsored by the Pattern Design Circle a membership community for knit and crochet pattern designers that are feeling lost, lonely, or frustrated in their business. It connects you with a supportive community that's always eager to answer your questions and help you through the hard times. And there's loads of resources and activities specifically catered to business and designing. Sound like your jam? Check it out at snickerdoodleknits.com forward slash design dash circle. That's snickerdoodle like the cookie, knits, K-N-I-T-S dot com forward slash design dash circle. All right, let's get into it. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Pattern Design Circle podcast. I am so excited once again to be here in your ear chatting. This is our last episode from our series of what, like seven episodes now? all about planning, goal setting, following through on those plans. And now um, this is kind of just making making stuff fun in your business. So kind of a follow-up, I guess, on the previous episode, which was actually two episodes ago now, but uh, the previous episode in the series, which was talking about really following up on your goals and your plans. Um, this is basically kind of another way to do it or to incentivize you while you are working towards those goals and those plans. So we're talking all about having fun in your business by gamifying tasks, especially tasks that aren't so fun, that maybe feel mundane and boring that you really just don't want to tackle. And so uh, we can make it more fun by gamifying it, making it feel a little bit maybe more like a challenge or just a game in general. So I have several ideas here and then some tips for brainstorming your own ideas. I also tend to be a bit of an idea generator. So um, if there's something maybe in your business where you're, you're like, I just, I really, 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 really hate this. This is the worst thing ever. I dread it every single time. Um, feel free to shoot me a message on Instagram, on email. I'm at Pattern Design Circle. My email is jessica at patterndesigncircle.com or jessica at snickerdoodleknits.com. And, um, Yeah, I'd love to brainstorm some ideas with you. So really the whole idea here, as I was, you know, kind of putting together actual examples, realized that it's really about reframing our mindset. The tasks are still the same. And some of the things that I have here for gamifying are actually things that we've talked about with different terminology. Uh, But, you know, Terming it as a game and thinking of it in the context of games is just more fun. Just sounds more exciting. It's just adds this element of fun that's not there already. So I'll just, I guess, dive in on this list of ideas. So first few are some that I have seen on Instagram over the last few months. Uh, One was for actual for like achieving your goals, for setting your goals. Well, I guess it's not so much for setting your goals kind of, but um, for achieving them, uh, this idea of creating a bingo card of your goals. And so it's not like you have to achieve all of your goals, but the goal is to get a bingo out of your goals. So I really loved that because I think it kind of helps address this concern of, well, I don't want to put myself in a box. I don't want to just, you know, force myself to have to move forward on a project uh, and maybe I'm not loving it anymore. And so instead, and maybe it's like, I have so many ideas. I don't really know what I want to pick for the year. Um, And who knows what the year is going to bring. So You know, the idea is, all right, create a grid, create this graphic of your ideas and you can make it, you can make it a typical bingo size if you want, or you could make it 
whatever size you want. You can make it a three by three, you can make it a four by four, you can make it five by five. I mean, I guess you could even not make it a square. So um, then, and then the, I guess just the shortest dimension then would be your, your bingo. But uh, so then if you achieve three in a row or four in a row, or whatever, if you fill up a whole row, whether that a row, a column or a diagonal line, uh, then you've, you've been successful in achieving your your goals for the year. That doesn't mean you achieved all of them, but you achieved some of them. So I thought that was super fun. Uh, it's a way to kind of like visualize what your goals are, a way to maybe pick things for the, you know, when it's time to pick a new, new thing to focus on um, and a fun way to be like, all right, I didn't achieve everything, but that's fine. I, I knew that what I had created as goals it wasn't going to be reasonable to achieve everything and so instead we're just we're just going for three or four or whatever um and maybe you know maybe you complete eight but you only have one one row of three or four or whatever um and I definitely feel like you should still give yourself the free space in the middle <laughs> um anyway another idea and so I tried to figure out where I found saw that and I couldn't find it. Um, so I don't I think I must have shared somebody else's story to my story and so I couldn't find it. Um, so I don't know who to give credit to for that, but super loved that idea. Another idea was from Jen Butler says on Instagram. Uh she's somebody I really enjoy following. She's just a creative, a storyteller. Um yeah. Anyway, so one thing that she uses, and this is something that she actually created, so I could, I can link the um, the actual worksheet download on Etsy. I think it's like $2 or something if you want to get it for yourself. But she has created this template, this worksheet thing that's meant for breaking down a goal or a project into smaller tasks. And so rather than just creating a list, um, she has this elephant and I don't, I don't think it's already broken into pieces, but you just write your ideas and create different segments basically. And as you achieve them, you color it in. So it's like a kind of a task organizer that's more exciting than being a list and it's like a coloring page. So I think it's super fun. Um, here I will, I'll pull it up on my phone here for if you're watching the video version of this podcast. Yes. So it's a $2 download on Etsy. She calls it the goal offent. And uh, that's kind of the idea of how it looks. You can color it in. Uh, but the all of these dashed lines that separate the tasks, that's just what she's put in. So it's not set to a defined number of, of tasks. You really get to create it yourself. Is that right? No, maybe not. Maybe it is broken into to pieces already, but um, yeah, I guess it is broken into pieces already, but um, you could make one task into multiple or you could split them if you need to uh but it's just I think it's a super fun fun idea I kind of am interested in creating maybe some other versions of that at some point um and so yeah another thing that Jen has done is right now she's actually working through a whole bunch of things that she's been putting aside on her business for a long time. And she's like, all right, I finally want to move forward on my goals. So what she did was she has this like giant whiteboard and she wrote down each of these tasks, these projects on a sticky note. Well, yeah, on a sticky note. And then she numbered those sticky notes. She put all of these items in tasks in this column called tasks I've avoided. And she asked her partner to choose a random number of all the numbers available. And after he's chosen one, she does that sticky note number. Uh, and so it's a way to 
work through this list of things that she's avoided that she wants the results, um, but has just been avoiding the task. And then she's able to move them over into a column that is called completed. So if you're watching the video, um, here is what it looks like. Uh, this is just a, a reel, but um, here in this column, it's tasks she's avoided and all these tasks are on different sticky notes and then she's numbered the sticky notes themselves. I was thinking that um she so here you can see that she also she put another sticky note over the sticky note with the actual number so that when her partner chooses a task he doesn't know what task he's choosing and that she doesn't know either. So anyway uh I think that's a super fun idea for just trying to tackle the things that you know you're just going to keep putting off but kind of feel like you're you don't have to make the decision what am I doing next um and actually do it and then what she does is she then uses the elephant task Ella what you call it anyway the the elephant task sheet thing um to break down that project and then color in the pieces until it's complete um okay so some other ideas um you can race to see how quickly you can accomplish your tasks. Uh, so, like, I feel like speed thing. That that's a common common game. That <laughs> element of games is is all right. How fast can I do this? And um, so you can time yourself. You can not time yourself. You can, you know, say all right. Let's see if I can. Can I? Can I finish this before, you know, the kids get home from school? Can I finish this before lunchtime? Can I, you know, whatever, and kind of race to accomplish that. Now, I would say most of these things, or yeah, several of these ideas, like trying to push yourself time-wise and stuff like that. I want to say it's healthy to do that for everything all day, every day. Uh, I think that can lead to burnout. Uh, but this is like for the things that are really difficult or um, just you need some extra motivation. Uh, pressuring ourselves all of the time for everything isn't going to be healthy. But uh, if it's a task where you're like, this has just been hanging over my head, just want to get it done, I'm going to see how fast I can get it done. Another idea is to reward yourself with something fun at the end. So it's like, all right, I've finished this thing and now I am going to reward myself with a dance break, with a special treat, with maybe it's I get to work on a crafty creative project uh, if I complete this thing by this time. So uh, think like maybe when you were a kid or maybe you know other kids who like if they if they were told that if they cleaned their room by X, Y time, they could go out and play with their friend. Um, it's, so it's kind of like gamifying. It's, it's this reward system. Really, it's what we talk about when, when people talk about celebrating and wins and like uh, rewards. But I feel like um, that just hasn't ever, that doesn't, hasn't ever super resonated with me. That isn't something that I've ever, ever been a real motivating thing for me. But I really like this idea of thinking of it like a game. Like this is, this is a, a a game to get this done so that I can I can do something else so I can go paint a picture or um, work on a weaving or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, and then you know of course not everything on this list is probably going to resonate with you. Choose the things that resonate. Maybe one idea leads to something else for you that resonates. These are just ideas. Um, so another is like it it's something we we already know about we already kind of do but just thinking of it as more of a game sounds more fun uh so to-do lists just like how fun it is to check things off or to cross it off uh that's so incentivizing to me so kind of thinking of it as a game like how many things can i cross off how the like how many can i check off or whatever i know the most motivating uh, way I have like checked things off of a list was in 
a group where like you posted your um the tasks that you wanted to do for that week and then I would go in and uh put in a check mark emoji next to it every time uh I completed it and that was so incentivizing uh for some reason like the emoji just seeing those green check mark emojis was like hugely satisfying and other people saw it and so that was also motivating um so if something like that is motivating to you if you're in a group that has accountability stuff you can post stuff there even if nobody else is interacting with it um it can be incentivizing to you just to know that it's there for other people to see and you get to fill it in um I know for myself as well with to-do lists, uh, like I've talked before, I love, I love having things that I can erase and fill in. So like on a previous podcast, I talked about all these templates that I have, uh, but I like to use dry erase markers then. And then once it's all done, I get to erase it. And so once the whole, whole board is Don, I get to erase the whole thing and that's so satisfying. It's so fun. Um, I also use these uh, whiteboard notebooks or yeah, it's like a, it's a notebook with whiteboard pages. And so it's the same idea here. You can see <laughs> the the podcast episodes that I'm, I'm recording today. Uh, but the, anyway, uh, just, just being able to erase it and clear it, like, that's just so satisfying. And so then just to think of that as not only satisfying in its to-do list perspective, but as a, a fun game, like, I did it, I accomplished it, I won the game, I achieved the thing, um, victory, whatever you want, however you want to think of it. Uh, similarly, I sometimes do also use, um, a, a tablet. So I have a tablet that Sometimes I'll write notes on. So that's where my list here is that I'm reading from for podcast, all of these ideas. Uh, and so it's, you know, so satisfying to me at the end to be able to clear that uh, if I don't need the information later, you know, like just to reset it to be all clear. So to think of that, like as a game of like, all right, I'm, I'm like, kind of like I'm racing to get the things done so that I can clear it all. And, um, yeah, I don't know if that's that resonates with you or not, but that's something that's already motivating for me. But then to think of it as a fun game just sounds better. Um, and then, so I was like trying to think of like, all right, actual games. Um, what is it that we love about them? And there's one element of, I would say, perhaps especially digital games, whether that's video games. Uh, phone apps, things like that, where there's these different levels of conquering things. So uh, once you achieve level one, you can move on to level two, stuff like this. So I thought it'd be fun, you know, and <laughs> you, you have to balance also, like, how much time is this going to take to create? Is that worth, you know, what's the ROI in this is, you know, don't spend a whole week establishing a game system to get a project done in 30 minutes. I wouldn't recommend that. But um, anyway, the idea is to create like this gaming level system where when you conquer one level, you get to move on to the next one. So I'm thinking more so like if you have a task list, um, instead of just writing it down as a list of things to do. And first I do this and then I do this. It's like level one is A, B, C, D. If I complete that to, you know, an adequate level, I get to move on to level two. And then, you know, like you win the whole game if you conquer all the levels or something. Um, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not the biggest gamer. So if you, maybe you have, you probably have better ideas if you, play video games or anything like that but anyway thought that could be a super fun idea uh another idea is to um okay <laughs> uh some of these use your imagination like you be flexible in the term game okay uh so kind of like this idea of 
putting pressure and time on something while also thinking of like external motivators of like people seeing it or like, you know, all of that. Um, the idea is to like pretend that your next big opportunity, the person who's like behind that, maybe you really want to be on Knit Stars. And let's say Shelly of Knit Stars is going to be looking at your website next week to decide if you're going to be a knit star or not. Um, and this is like creating a whole whole scenario in your head, right? Uh, but creating like these fake scenarios of like the next big opportunity, that person is going to be looking at this thing as your resume next week or next month or whatever. Like using that as an incentive to be like, all right, I really need to get this done and make it good uh, so that whoever's looking at it is going to be impressed, is going to feel like, yes, I'm a great fit, yada, yada, yada. Um, this ties into a future episode where I'm going to talk about there's always, you know, that people are watching. Uh, you don't know who's looking at your stuff. Shelly could be looking at your stuff and if she's looking at your website, it's like, eh, no, I don't think they're a good fit. But maybe you are a good fit and you just don't have, have it on your website kind of thing. Um, but that that's a whole nother topic. Uh, the where the idea actually came from was, um, I've seen a couple of different like reels and TikToks and stuff on, uh, like, <laughs> it's for you know, like for with your ADHD friend, call them up and say that you're going to be coming in over in an hour, and then, you know, like just don't show up. And a couple hours later, when they're like, hey, are you still coming? You're like, oh, no, I'm not going to be able to make it or whatever. But the whole thing is like, you're doing them a favor because now they've just cleaned their apartment or their house or whatever in 40 minutes that they wouldn't have done otherwise. And it's something that, you know, that's been hanging over their heads and, you know, they're an introvert. So they're not going to mind that you didn't actually come over anyway. It's kind of this whole joke thing. But it was this idea of kind of like creating a a false scenario to put kind of a false timeline on things to encourage you to actually get it done. Um, and so, yeah, I liked, I like that idea. Um, but you do have to be good enough to an extent at tricking yourself, tricking your brain or your brain being okay with following through with fake scenarios, uh, using your imagination. Uh, and so like, really, like I said, so many of these things are, are things that we're already used to. So like for that scenario, it's kind of like co-working or accountability buddies. It's like, um, you know, somebody checking in, making sure you did it or creating a, a deadline for yourself so that you actually get it done. And then, you know, somebody else is aware of it. Um, but even like the rewarding yourself like that's like I said that's like the idea of you know celebrating your wins and stuff like that so these aren't like new ideas it's just I really think it's reframing it to make it more fun and <laughs> enjoyable and exciting and um I suppose if you use this all of the time it would get more boring uh so maybe use it somewhat sparingly um test it out whatever uh, another idea is to a timer to get as much done as you possibly can. So I know like, you know, like as a kid, it's like, all right, how much can I clean up in five minutes? How, and it's kind of tying back to that idea of like, all right, I'm going to be there an hour, clean up. Um, but it's just like this, this competition push. It's also, I mean, it's also like games, like say like Boggle where you have, three minutes to find as many words as you can or uh, things like that. It's just like this push to get get a whole bunch done at once. And honestly, this is like the idea of Pomodoro where you're like, all right, I have these sprints where I'm going to get as much done as I can in these time periods. I'm going to take breaks between yada, yada, yada. Uh, so it's, <laughs> it's not a new productivity idea either, um, but just phrasing it, thinking of it as a game, like, all right, a competition. How much can I get done? If you have a business friend or maybe not business, but they have something else they're wanting to accomplish and work on, um, 
you can be like, all right, we're going to, we're going to race. We're going to compete to see who can get more done at this time. Um, you know, if that's, if that's something both you and they are interested in, uh, and your timer, it doesn't have to be an actual timer. It could be a song. It could be an album, but you know, like a, a music album, a song album, um, it could be a podcast, it could be a video, it could be a movie, so many things. Um, it's just this idea of in a time. So as far as like an example of using something else, you could say, all right, I want to get this done in approximately five minutes. I'm going to put on a song that's also going to be exciting and motivational. Um, and as soon as the song's up, I'm done. Uh -huh. I saw something, oh, it's actually, I shared it on Instagram, actually. Uh, the Taylor Swift running challenge, apparently she, like, for uh, preparing for concerts, she would walk to the slow songs on the album and run to the faster songs on the album and so there were folks who were like all right we're gonna follow this too and so it's really giving them uh it's you know it's it's basically using a timer but it's using something else more exciting than a timer to dictate what those times are um all right another idea <laughs> is to write down your tasks on index cards. Um, and as you complete the tasks, you do something with the card. So one idea is you could start building a tower with the card. So like, uh, I was thinking of like, you know, like with playing like a deck of playing cards and like people will like build towers and things. Um, but it's like, in order to add something to the tower, you have to complete the task. Um, or you could rip them all up if you want. You could have a fire if you want. Uh, you could maybe maybe use smaller pieces of paper uh, or you, you end up shredding uh, your index cards or whatever you're using uh, into like confetti. Maybe you do big index cards too. I don't know. Anyway, the idea is you have all these, these pieces of paper once you're done. Maybe it's the end of the week, the end of the month, the end of the quarter, whatever you want to do. You have all of these collected things that you've accomplished and then you throw them up or you blow them oh, like confetti and it just goes everywhere. <laughs> it's like, like a celebration party. Um, I hope if you are watch listening to this episode, you're not like some serious person who thinks that all these games were just going to be serious. But I'm, I'm assuming if you wanted to have more fun in your business, you're, even if you think I'm ridiculous, you're a little bit understanding. <laughs> all righty. Um, another idea. Uh, you can pretend that when you're recording like a video or a reel or a TikTok or something that you're like putting on a play or a movie or a TV show or something for other people to watch. So it's like, it's not just this thing to talk about this thing or to tell this story, but it's like, all right, this is like, you know, part of a movie. This is part of a play. This is um, maybe you can think of it as a commercial on TV or a radio ad or something like that, you know, whatever you want it to be, but kind of this idea of like um, thinking it's maybe for something bigger or for something more exciting. Um, and I really pulled this idea out of like little kids pretend, you know, like pretending that they're putting on a play or a movie or, you know, like they're, they're creating this thing. Um, and so really, really diving into kind of that imagination. Uh, and honestly, we kind of see this going on in some of the, the trending reels and videos and things that we see. Uh, it kind of is like uh, this, this mini little show kind of thing. So for example, the reels, uh, it seems like they've, they've gone down in popularity more recently, but for a while, there were all of those reels that were as if you're calling into a hotline center and they're answering your questions, they're giving you advice. Um, that person recording the video, they're not, 
they're not, you know, they don't run a hotline. It was very obvious, you know, they have, have these silly get-ups for their uh, headsets and things like that, but uh, it's kind of just like, role-playing into these these different ideas uh also even like the point of view reels where it's like this is like point of view from yada 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 and so it's kind of like uh stepping into this alter reality or you know showing it from this different perspective that oh that's not your life that's not just like showing things but it's like it's going into kind of this play movie kind of vibe Uh, you can even think of, like, say when you're, this isn't necessarily plays, movies, but um, when you are doing like an outfit of the day or a styling reel, things like that for your designs, you can pretend like you're playing dress up. Like you're a five-year-old girl playing dress up with all of the shawls or, or sweaters or whatever. Uh, and then... <laughs> Um, another idea is to, I was just thinking of like, as kids, um, what, what was fun? What was, maybe it wasn't necessarily a game, but it was something exciting and fun, kind of like a game. Uh, and so many things that are like explorative, uh, so exploratory, uh, so digging in the dirt or going out in the woods and finding the bugs or, you know, whatever it is, like treating something new as being something that you're exploring. So maybe you're exploring a new topic, you're ex digging into this new project or idea, uh, really kind of approaching it with this curiosity and excitement, like, what am I going to find? What is, what's going to happen here? Um, and, and getting excited about new things. So maybe this is taking a class, maybe it's learning a new technique, maybe it's learning something about marketing or a website or whatever, uh, but kind of taking it from this perspective of just being super curious about the world. Uh, another idea is like, uh, if you like putting together puzzles, maybe jigsaw puzzles, or maybe it's something else. Uh, that's the strategy challenge of like putting things together. Uh, treat, like you could treat kind of breaking down a project into this challenge or this puzzle of like trying to find all the pieces of, um, all right, what all needs to come together in order to make this project a reality? What all needs to ha happen? What all needs to come together to, to create the thing, to make, to, to finish the goal, to finish the project. So rather than, you know, just writing down all the lists, like thinking of it as finding the puzzle pieces. I also uh, had thought of like actually like drawing out a puzzle. And so we have all the individual pieces. And so it's like, these are all the pieces that need to connect together in order to create the thing. Um, maybe you have a printout where you have the pieces all cut out and maybe you have like a cry cut or something, cr cr cricket. Um, that cuts them for you. And then you can write on them and then you can actually put the puzzle together when you're done, whatever. Um, another idea is like just with challenges uh, that, that can be such a fun motivator game kind of thing is to challenge yourself. Uh, I know <laughs> I, I used to treat planning a lot like challenging how much I can possibly put into a year, how much I can possibly achieve. That didn't turn out to be a good thing because then I put way too many things on and then I was hustling and working nonstop and got burnt out. <laughs> um, but anyway, just challenging, like how much can I do, how much can I create of something? Maybe it's how many content ideas can I create in five minutes? How many content ideas can I create today? Um, or design ideas, whatever. There's also the the idea just to make it more fun uh, is how many bad ideas can I create? So if you're really struggling to create ideas, make it a challenge to create stuff that's really, really, really bad. And that can help loosen 
yourself up, relax a little bit, have a little more fun, uh, but also can help your creativity flow a lot more. So just see how bad and terrible you can make your ideas um, and how many of them you can make. Uh, then I was thinking specifically of the game Uno. Uh, if you're not familiar with Uno, it's a, a, a simple kids game, but in a family game, but you, you match colors or you match numbers. So every card has a color and a number. Um, and so maybe to gamify things, you could match tasks and projects in your business so that you have like things that you're working on similarly. So this is kind of the idea of like batching, or uh, maybe it's something that's like, all right, these all are going to use this part of my brain. These all are going to be designs, whatever. Um, playing a match game to find like things to work on those things at the same time. Um, anyway, just in general, <laughs> I don't know if you liked any of those ideas or not. Um, I was having fun creating ideas. Uh, I thought some of them were fun to follow through with. Maybe you didn't. But if you want to create your own ideas, um, think of games you played and you loved as a kid. Or maybe you watch other kids play. Maybe you have kids. Maybe you have nieces and nephews. Maybe you have grandkids. Um, what, what kind of games do they love to play? Uh, and why? What, what is so fun about it? And sometimes the most simple games are, are the best perhaps especially in terms of gamifying our business. Uh, but it doesn't have to be some elaborate game plan. It can just be something to make it more fun, to make it uh, add a little bit more excitement to those things that are really boring. Uh, so, you know, I was just thinking of a few things like we played when we were little, uh, you know, like the floor is lava or even things like playing kitchen, like that's, that's a real life thing, but you're like, you're playing as if you're, you're doing this thing and you're not. Um, but just a lot of things that are imaginative, there's puzzles, there's strategies, there's a lot of exploring, especially as a kid, um, can be things that seem nonsensical. You know, like how many of those ideas did I just list with like, all right, that's a little bit silly, but if it works, it works. If it adds some fun and makes it more interesting, do it. Uh, you're, you're the boss here. Um, nobody else has to even know about your games to judge you. Um, and if they are judging you, that's their problem. You're getting stuff done, right? <laughs> you're feeling good about accomplishing things. Uh, so it can be nonsensical, like, you know, things like ring around the rosies. Like we had no idea what that meant, right? Like growing up and you're just like going in a circle and then like, I don't know, falling down. Um, so be silly, be curious, explore, try new things. Uh, just think of it from this different perspective of, of having fun and making a game of it. Uh, you can also think about games that you love now. What do you love about them? Uh, is it strategies and puzzles and challenges? Uh, is it maybe that you know that there's a solution? So if you think about it from this perspective of maybe your marketing or business or the design, like it's, it's this puzzle, this challenge that you're just finding the solution of or a solution for. Uh, maybe you really like mindless games. So uh, making a game out of things that are more mindless, like say picking out photos for your pattern or trending audio or things like that that are maybe just like kind of mundane, kind of boring, um, not requiring a lot of thought, but create that kind of into a game. Maybe it's because it's fast paced and it's, you know, like this whole timed challenge, how fast can I go thing. Um, maybe you think of like, say your pattern photos are entries in a competition, a photo competition. Um, and so, you know, you're gonna try to, to make them as beautiful and as creative or as whatever uh, to win the competition. Uh, and then even things like co-working with other people and checking in on tasks and progress with them, like 
creating that kind of like as a game competition, it's maybe the competition of how much can I get done before I check in with them again, or just this knowing somebody else is watching and uh, kind of this, this competitive idea without, you know, like actually comparing yourselves against each other. Um, so whatever it is for you, I hope this gave you some ideas. I hope I uh, started sparking, you know, like, all right, here's, here's some things I can do in my business to make this more fun, to make especially the boring things more fun. If you are really inspired by kind of the, the competitive aspect or even the collaborative aspect of some games of, of playing with other people, then co-working, accountability buddies, all that kind of stuff might be a super good fit for you. If you don't already have a space, there's a lot of free things online where you can join just a co-working space. It's not going to be other people doing the same thing as you, um, but that might be helpful. Or if you're part of any groups, like to pattern design circle or anything, you can pop in there and, and find help inspiration that way. So I am super excited for you to uh, let loose a little bit, have a little bit more fun gamifying your business, especially the boring parts. If there's something in particular from this episode that you are excited to implement, I would super, super love it because I know there were some silly ideas in here, but that that's kind of the point, right? Is, is to, to have fun. So already I'm excited for you to have more fun in your business. I'll get you on the next one. Wow. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. If you found it valuable, please share the podcast with a designer friend. And if you have a minute, leave a review. It's so helpful for me and means the world to me. Chat soon.